Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Victory here, and welcome back to another gaming tutorial, and today what we're going to be doing is going over a Pokemon-styled bike, and basically what I mean by that is we have our little character here, we can move in, so just a couple subtle directions here, and if we press the B button, whoa, we get an awesome little bike, and we go just a little bit faster, and of course you can specify the speed of that, we can go diagonal, yes, I know, it's just really quick movement that I had to put in there for tutorial purposes, but yeah, if we press B again as well, whoa, our bike is gone, and we just move at regular speeds, and um, a nice little feature too as well is if we're, you know, no matter what direction we're in, if we still press the bike button, it will automatically go to whatever direction that we're currently in. That's really easy to implement as well. And uh, actually, this whole tutorial is really simple to do. So nonetheless, let's go ahead and uh, exit out of this little example here and get right into it. All right, so a couple things I want to mention just before we continue here. As you can see, it's you know, really simple. You just have a couple little things here. But before we get into that, uh, I just want to mention one. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and download this example, which I actually made and I'm going to upload to my website, the link to that will be in the de uh, description below. Excuse me. Uh, it's kind of late here, so my grammar is probably going to be a little eh. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, this tutorial is also requested. And for everyone requested the tutorial, I do apologize for this being a little bit late. I know, you know, you're probably expecting this for maybe a week or so, but I kind of had delayed because there's so many other things going on. So I do apologize for that. That, but nonetheless, I'm doing it now, so hopefully it works for you and uh, everyone else who's watching. So, nonetheless, let's go ahead and get right into this. So, the first thing I want to go and do is uh, let's go ahead and click on this sprite here. It's named square underscore player. And you'll notice that it is centered as well. You're going to want to do that, um, and I'll explain why in just a minute. But pretty much what we have here is four separate sprites of four different directions of our player. Uh, basically, this first sprite here is him facing backwards, I guess. <laughs> kind of like his back is turned to you guys. And um, this other one here is obviously facing to the right, and this one's facing to the left, and this one's facing forward. And you don't really have to do it in this order, but you can do it, um, or excuse me, what am I trying to say? Um, you can basically do it in whatever order you want, um, but it has to at least be these four sprites. I mean, if you do want all these directions. So, anyway, that is that. And the next thing I want to go ahead and go into is our SPR underscore player underscore bike. And essentially what this is, is <laughs> it's the exact same thing. Uh, it's a funky little preview there. Um, basically all the same directions, although I just drew a bike on each direction. And, um, let's see, I also changed the size up to 64 by 64. So originally it was 32 by 32, um, but I just changed the size up, um, you know, halved it, so I can fit the bike in there. There. And I also centered this as well. And the reason why these are centered is because when this sprite uh, is going to change over to this one, um, you're going to want it to change. Uh, excuse me, change in the exact same place that the sprite is. If that makes any sense. So we're going to have a, basically a player right here, and when we change it to the bike, um, he's basically going to stay in the same position or whatever, and the bike sprite is going to kind of take over in that exact same spot. So don't worry if that doesn't really make a whole bunch of sense right now. Uh, I'm sure as you kind of fiddle around this or just look around the example or whatever, um, you guys will understand what I'm talking about. So nonetheless, let's go ahead and get into this OBG underscore player here. The first thing we have is a create event, and in this create event we have some simple code, uh, sprite underscore index equals sp underscore player, and so this is pretty much basic coding. I mean, all it's doing is setting the sprite index uh, to our player sprite up here, and the image index by default when you start out is going to start out on number three, so basically it's going to start out on this one, and you can make it do whatever one you want. If you want him to start to the left or facing the... Or excuse me, or yeah, the left, or facing the right, or his back turned, whatever. <laughs> Just go ahead and uh, change this number up to whichever one corresponds with one of these right here. So like this is image three, so it would just be uh, image index equals three. All right, so image speed equals zero, and basically all this is saying is that basically we're setting our sprite its index as well as image and the speed's going to make sure that um, it doesn't like move frantically through every single frame it just stays in one single frame and um, yeah <laughs> all right so the bike equals false uh, this is going to be our variable for our bike and uh, under here it says bc count equals false which basically sounds for bike count equals or excuse me equals zero and this is going to be um, for whenever we press the button it's going to count how many times we've pressed it which will turn our variable on and off all right, so in our step event, uh, we're going to kind of skip this for now. We can just go down to our movement here. So in our movement, uh, I just basically just have keyboard uh, press the left, um, or excuse me, just keyboard left, and then I have this code. And this code is basically saying if bike equals true, so if our variable bike is equal to true, uh, x uh, minus equals 6. And basically x is just our movement. If you have movement of your own, you can just go ahead and just 
put that right in there. This X uh, minus equals 6 is just my own simple movement for tutorial purposes. I mean, you can keep it in there if you want, but again, if you have your own movement, you can just plug it in right here. Um, what you do want to keep, though, is the image index. And we went over these uh, just a couple seconds ago. But basically, what they're doing here is when you press left, your uh, image index is going to move to your left um, image of your sprite here. And uh, the image speed is just equal 0, so it doesn't go pan through everything else. And if bike does not equal false, or else, um, basically we're going to do the same exact thing, but our speed is going to be at a speed of 3. So we're going to go slower than if we weren't on a bike. And pretty much the same thing goes for all of these various things right here. Um, so, I mean, you guys probably already get what these are. Um, now let's go ahead and go to the press B key. Uh, right, and um, basically this is uh, setting our variable bike to true, so if we press B on our keyboard, um, our variable bike is going to be set to true, and we obviously know already what happens if our variable bike is true when our movement is taking place, um, and BC count plus equals 1, so basically this is making it so uh, when we press the B key, our BC count variable is going to go from 0 to 1. And it's not going to keep going up because this is only a key press, so it's like every single time we press it, not every single time we hold it. Kind of like a keyboard event. And uh, sprite index equals SPR underscore player bike. And basically what this is doing is uh, it's just changing our uh, sprite right here from player to player underscore bike. And the reason, um, now you guys probably already understand this, but the reason that it's able to keep the direction is because in these directions right here, um, it's basically just setting the direction already by when we move. So the game's automatically going to know what position we're in. Um, it's just going to switch it up to the player bike, and that's why it's important to have the same exact directions and stuff like that than the other one right here. All right, so um, let's see. Finally, the step event. So basically, what you want to or what's going on here is uh, if BC count equals two. So if we press this like basically twice or whatever, um, we're turning our variable off because it says bike equals false, and BC count goes back to zero. So it can reset itself. We can redo the variable and whatnot. And sprite index equals SP underscore player. So it's basically resetting it back to the player, not the bike. So it kind of gives the illusion that we're going from a bike to just a regular player. And that is pretty much how it works. That's <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is like really sore or something right now. I have no idea. But anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much how it works. So we can just go ahead and move around. And if we press B, we get our awesome little bike and press B again. We're just a regular guy. So anyway, guys, that is pretty much it for the tutorial. Feel free to comment, rate, subscribe, whatever you want to do. And uh, nonetheless, that is, um, I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> I don't know why I said that in the first place. Anyway, uh, I guess this has been Rex Furry, and uh, I pretty much said all I want to say. So until next video, until next time, I'll see you all then.